All right, let's take a look at um, the market this morning. I want to go back to Monday. Uh, let's go through the whole trading week so far. So let's go through the entire session, what we have. So <clears throat> this is Monday, the entire session. Okay, so what we have, we have the indicator coming out to you and also the strategy so you can back test the indicator. What happened, what, what's happening is um, we are going to be able to test these retracements whenever speed comes in the market the best time to look for trade setups in all markets is when you get speed and then you look for the retracement so these green boxes will form when there's speed in the market that means you have major buyers in the market uh, a red box will form when you get major sellers in the market what happens when you get major buyers and sellers in the market? The market exhausts itself. And once it exhausts itself, it looks for a retracement. So that is, uh, that's the pretty much the strategy what we have going here. So it started off the morning on June the 14th at midnight. You had um, exhaustion, uh, speed bar come in. We had a retracement. These triangles will pop automatically. Now you can adjust when these triangles come up. You can adjust. Uh, you can adjust uh, if you want more trades or less trades. You can also adjust if you want them with trend only. I have them doing counter trend trades and also trend trades showing in the room. You can adjust if you want smaller retracements or longer retracements. And you can also adjust if you want more speed bars or less speed bars. So if you're a trader that uh, looks for position trading and you only want two or three of these to pop a day. Um, we're going over in the conference call uh, here this month how to do that. And then also if you want more trades, uh, you know, I'll show you every trade since Monday that's happened so far. So I have it adjusted to have pretty much a lot of counter trend trade and trend trades coming up in the room. The reason I do that, we got our market profile and supply demand lines in the room. If these fire on top of those, they're really, really effective. Um, so let's just work through this. What happens is that when you do have a speed bar that comes in, it looks for that first retracement. So Monday started off, it, it got a nice counter move up. Uh, you can uh, also, the indicator that I sent out to you, you can match that with the strategy that I'm sending out to you also. So this is trend and uh, this is trend and um, and counter trend trades, Terrence. I do have a chop indicator also you can turn on that will catch the swing highs and swing lows like this. Major tops, major bottoms. I have it turned off in the room. You have ability to do that also. We'll go over that in the conference call. But so when you work through it, this thing is dynamic when you come into when the market really starts moving. Uh, you can see when speed comes in, a red a uh, trend box indicates that you have a major speed in the market that that typically means that the first big retracement you're going to get a continuation trade now the size of the speed box is what sets this whole whole thing up on good trades so if i see uh if i see a trend box that has one two three it doesn't matter if it's green or red back and forth red obviously means downtrend green uptrend but if there if there's more than three candles inside of a closed trend box you're pretty much consolidation so here is one two three then you got a speed box so that is a consolidation before speed i really like to see that because that usually means you got a big possible trade coming now i have the trend box set to uh i mean the speed bar set to one if i had it set to two it would have picked up this trade also if you had two or less, because you have one, two, three closed trend boxes for consolidation, right there is your speed bar. That would have colored that, and that would have been trade there also. But I got to set in the room to be one. There's a one candle close inside of a closed trend box. That tells the algorithm that we have speed coming to the market. You got a possible big move coming. When you see a speed box come in, it just educates the trader that you got a possible major possible retracement coming um, if it's a chop market you got a possible top or bottom in the market coming so as you work through it we had another speed come in there's your retracement if they 
the ones that are really effective are they if they land on symmetry dots or market profile or um, supply demand but you really don't even need that the, the algorithm don't even look for that it just looks for speed retracement speed retracement speed retracement now what it'll do is it'll catch the counter move up also I have it set to counter so this one we had a speed down and what it did if you have a chop indicator it called it that low but what it did, we if you see a speed down right back to speed up, it tells you get a possible counter move coming up. This happens on major tops and major bottoms if they're very close like this. And you'll see this pattern a lot. And then you know to take the first retracement and you get a nice little move up to the upside. And then it went right back down again for a double bottom, speed down, first retracement caught that one also. So it caught some real good trades. One, two, three, four, five, six seven trades in a row and then it caught a real big trend move up into the close uh, that's eight trades nine trades your stop never got hit nine trades in a row on Monday is, is just really effective so you get days like this where this thing is just really dynamic and if you use your stops correctly and your ATR your strategy that we're sending out to you does have an ATR trail but I really like trades like this here's another pattern I like I see two trend boxes in a row that have not retraced if I see this, another pattern I like, if I see a trend box print, trend box print, and never retrace, this usually tells me we got an extended hard push up. You'll see this quite a bit. Um, here's another trend box retrace. So Monday was just a dynamic day. You just, there's, traders really love Monday. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row. Let's go to Tuesday's trading. So we go to Tuesday. Tuesday's trading started off. We started off at a now. If you would have had, like I said, you can adjust this to. I have one trend box. See, this is a one trend box. If you if you want to do tr two trend box or less, it caught this move right there from the three consolidation boxes of more than three candles that closed inside of it. This is a beautiful consolidation one two three that caught the speed i have it set to one in the room like i said a lot of traders will want to go to two so you don't miss these moves there's one closed trend box two candle close two candle close it caught this major high right there also i got one so caught this top with your stop never got hit then it came down on tuesday had a major consolidation box real long one speed came in the market it caught this high also in the morning at 9:41. It caught this high yesterday also um, speed came in uh, th this is a real nice one because like, like I said I like three consolidation boxes where there are more than two or three candles that's closed inside of a closed trend box more than three candles obviously one two three four five six that's about ten candles about ten candles about ten candles this tells me this is consolidation before continuation and then you see a closed trend box that comes in right there and then our first retracement, this one fires, catches that major high yesterday, and uh, and you're good to go. Yeah, I'll show the ATR in a second, Terrence. So then you come down, and we have another one into the close. And then at new at midnight, I mean it um, had exhaustion. Then we had one that came in for the up, and then we had really chop coming into the close, chop, chop, and now we're into chop this morning. So this morning it's been choppy because of we are in a sideways market what I want to see here this morning is I want to see this break out the chop indicator has been working quite well if you turn this into chop it's caught this low and high in other words if I turn this into chop and show the chop indicator by itself today there's a chop feature you don't want to trade trend trades and chop but you want to trade chop trades and trend I mean you want to trade chop and chop trend and trend but you can see you can turn this feature on this morning. If you see your chop, you want to trade your chop trades. So here's your chop trades this morning. It's caught the major, major high. Here's your major low. Here's your major high. And then it missed this one right here just by a little bit. But if you see that we're flat, just so flat where the moving averages are, are flat, flat, uh, we do have the Fed. Uh, let's see, what time does that come out? I believe, let's see, FOMC right there it is. At two o'clock, that's what, why we're sort of sideways today. But once the Fed comes out, 
you won't want to watch for these chop indicators. You want to watch for the trend trades, and you're going to see trades like Monday. Monday, I believe you're going to see this market really heat up, and you're going to see a lot of these fire off. It's going to be very effective after the Fed comes out. So you can turn on on the indicator. If you look at the indicator here, you can dictate whether you you want the chop mode on. I have the chop mode off. It's in trend mode right now. So you can have both of them running together on your charts. I just have the trend mode right now because trend, once we go back into trend, like I said, it'll catch these trades, these big trades like this. You know, that was like I said, nine for nine on Monday. It'll catch these big giant moves. That's what I'm looking for after the Fed today. Major speed after consolidation, get some of these guys to form. Um, so watch for this. That's why I got the trend on today. Obviously, we're in chop mode right now. If you look at it, let me show you. I mean, look at we're in between market profile, high value red, low value green. It's stuck in between the supply and demand lines. If I skinny this down, we're in chop. Look at that chop. It's very choppy. It started getting choppy about 2.30 yesterday, and we are sideways. I mean, it's forming actually a wedge right now. We do have a wedge forming. So we will get out of this chop here soon and get back into trend. You can see we're forming a wedge. You can see over here in the long time frame, it is just chop city. Look at that. So what they're doing is they're buying the high, selling the low right now. Once we get outside of these areas, look for some trend trades. We get outside of this area. And we get outside this area. Then look for some triangles of fire. I would just relax on trade setups right now, not unless you're using the chop indicator. If you're using the chop indicator, you know. So let's say you, when you get this in your hands, you see it's choppy. I would just turn the chop indicator on, and then I would leave that on until we get back outside a high value area. You can turn the chop indicator on like that, just one click of the button, and then you can see that it's pretty much caught the major highs and major lows this morning. So the chop indicator is notorious for calling a lot of session highs, session lows. Okay, you can use that in the strategy. Also, what I like to do is I like to run them both. I like to run chop and trend together on two separate strategies. I'm going to show you how that works. But if you just want to trend only, you can just put trend on there. That's what I have in the room today because I believe the Fed come out. It's going to show some uh, trend trades here this afternoon. So we're going to take the chop off. But... You can adjust these parameters to less or more, less or more. Um, um, and we went over this. Your speed period and speed candles, I got to set to one because it's always one more than what is showing. So I have it two, so it's showing one speed candles. So in other words, if I want to show more speed, I would just adjust that to three, just the four, you'll get more setups. Um, if you want it less setups, adjust it to one and bring the speed box higher to nine or 10. And you'll get less setups. But right now in the room, it's pretty uh, it, it's pretty effective the way it is. So I leave that as far as that goes. So I'm going to go back to trend and leave it in trend like I did all week. These are trend trades only that we're looking for. But we're in chop, so I don't want to play any speed bars. If I play a speed bar, I want to look for tops and bottoms right now until I break out of this high value and low value. Once we get outside of this. These areas, we should see some good setups. All right, but if you're running it on your own because you're always sending this out to you, just remember, if you're flat, when these moving averages are just, look at the sideways movement. The difference between a flat and a trend market, it's pretty easy to see. You know, a trend, you're pretty vertical on the MAs. You got width between them. If you see that, these trend retracement trades are real big. Or if you're in a downtrend like this, trend retracement, but look when you go sideways on these moving averages. Moving averages are worthless to me. They're really not very effective, but they're great for trend direction. If you're sideways like this, use a chop indicator. If you are trending where you see it, just the moving average spread, I got a, a simple 8, 20, 50 right there. I mean, you know, you're above the VWAP, below the VWAP on the blue. You know, that tells you a big trend in effect. Then you just want to use trend indicator. I mean, this is just tells you trend. If you're not buying trend retracements and move like a, this, like this, or trend down like this, it's really big 
this one it was nine for nine you know you nine for nine on monday because he big trend movements on the big time frame because you can see when the moving average spread the eight and the 50 and the 20 are spread big when you get that big move unlike today the chop indicator is two for uh two uh three times i'm sorry called the highs and lows in the market major session high major session low because we're in chop so and i'll go back in the conference call how we want to use that but right now we are in a chop mode chop 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 so it may sometimes it, it likes to cut loose before the fed um, but once the fed comes out we should cut loose so like i said this is a trend indicator that's on now so be be aware that you don't have the chop indicator turned on there so if i look when let's go look at what uh the strategy the strategy part of it now if i go to the strategy part of it we talk about ATR trails and all that stuff. What you can do is that the strategy, okay, you have an ATR trail, your, your strategy will match up with the indicator. So whatever you program the indicator to do, the strategy will be there also. So the strategy will actually show these ATR dots trail. You can make them tight or loose. So after you get in a triangle, what have you, um, it will trail these trades. It will trail these trades. And let me show you something real quick. So let's take a look from going from long to short, short to long on an ATR, how it works. So this is a short ATR, all right? And this is a long ATR, just is a choppy market pretty much this day too, but it just shows you the power of the ATR is that once you get your first target, you can adjust your ATR in the strategy, and then you can, uh, it, it will pop you out once that ATR is closed above or below. So you can match up the indicator with the strategy to find out pretty much what time frame that you wanna use. I show a three sim in the room. This is a very small time frame. This is a three sim Rinko. Very small time frame because you can use very small stops with this, with this indicator that we use on the triangles in the room. So, but the strategy you can use as far as that goes for pretty much any ATR that you want. What I have set up, I have an ATR built in right here. You can, you don't have to use an ATR. I have toggle switches, so you can take it off if you want. But the the looser you make the ATR, the the looser it's going to allow you to get in big giant runners. The tighter you make it, the tighter stop is going to be. The tighter it's going to trail. So I have, you know, you can put it to anything you want. If you, if I put it to 30, and then I loosen it up. What it's going to do is going to loosen your ATR up. Your ATR is going to be loosened up. And what's going to do is allow, oops, I got to turn the ATR on. Sorry. ATR is off. So depending how you want to do it, if you want tight or loose, you can really customize this indicator how you want to do it. Just depends how you want to do it. See, now it's a little bit more looser on price. If you're trying to catch those longer runs, you can adjust the ATR how you want to adjust it. And that's a toggle switch. I also, a little unique thing that we put in, and Tina likes doing this, one of our members, we have a time indicator. A time indicator is set to zero. It will not use a time indicator. What it says is this, is that if you are not profitable by, if you are not flat or profitable by one tick after a, so many seconds, then it'll flatten the trade immediately. So if you put three in there, it tells you that the strategy says, if I'm not up or down, if I'm not flat or up on the position within three seconds, it's going to get me out at the best available price. If you don't want to use that feature, you hit zero and it'll totally ignore that feature. The chop indicator, if you're in a chop market, it tends to fire like it did this morning. 
caught the session high and pretty much the session low this morning so far. If you want the chop feature on, you can use the chop feature also. If not, that is just looking for counter and trend. You can use break even plus one or break even. You don't have to do that. You can toggle that off if you want to. Here's your stop ticks, your target ticks, your target one ticks. It goes in multiples of two right now, but you can go in multiples of four, of eight, and so on. It has a time that you trade, the start time and the end time. It won't take trades outside those parameters. It does have the overbought, oversoldness if you want on the retracement. We go over the speed period. If you want more speed or more setups, you lower this number. If you want more speed, you increase this number. We go over that. I do have a built-in time frame to only take trend trades. Now, I haven't turned off on the room. So the room shows all counter trend trades and trend trades together. And I, I, I run that in the room all the time, the triangle. So let's say you just want to take certain amount of speed retracements with overall moving average trend. You would click that. You can use it on any time frame. You can use it for minute charts if you want. It looks at a higher time frame. So if I'm looking at a three sim Renko and I want a nine sim Renko with let's say the 20 and 50 day moving averages, then it will only take three sim retracements in direction of that larger time frame. It looks at the higher time frame. I have it checked off, but it works very effective if you only want to take trend triangles. I said that's pretty much what the strategy does, as you can tell. I have it set up to, to, to do exactly what the indicator does. So whatever the indicator does, the strategy will do the same thing. So right now we're in, like I said, we're in trend mode. So I would not run a trend, I would not trade trend triangles in a chop market. I would trade chop in a trend market. So chop is very effective. One, two, three, it's got the three major session highs. It's got the session high, it's got the session low, it's got the, the second high, and this one it missed. So if you ran that strategy, you were if you just ran the chop indicator by itself in a chop market, you you had three trades, the ATR would have pretty much caught you in that big move here caught it here, caught it there, and then you would have been stopped out once. Um, so you can use that for CHOP. <clears throat> what I like to do, like I said, in the what I like to run CHOP and TREND together. Um, usually the TREND will overcompensate the CHOP, CHOP overcompensate the TREND, uh, but you can just pick which one you want to run uh, depending if it's CHOP or TREND. The best way to decide if it's CHOP or TREND is look at the flatness or the steepness of the moving averages or if you're outside or inside market profile. So we're going to put this back to trend. As you can see, trend is not as effective. It caught one trend trade and two stops on chop. So chop is more effective in chop markets. Trend is more effective in trend. So if I get outside of high value area and low value area today, these should be very, very accurate. So what I'm looking is I'm looking for a break of my supply line of 28 this low or a breakout of uh, supply line, I'm sorry, of HVA of 39 this high. So when we go through this today, I'll be looking for a breakout at these levels and then look for a retracement. All right, Gerald, go ahead and check that off. So if you want to review that video about exactly what we, we look to do, um, that's pretty much it. Let's go over some questions that was in here. Uh, Phil, in looking at these signals, employing the end bar stop reversal here would flip you around in the correct direction on these losing trades, turning most of them into winners. Yeah, Phil, we could put that in the strategy too. Yeah, as we as we progress, when you get the indicator, what Phil's talking about is on these when you when you use an ATR um, instead of using a hard stop, when once you get going on, let's say an entry, you know you could use a um, Another ATR strategy that we have that I will be putting in on the on the uh, on the strategy, you can do either or. So Phil, you're correct. It's the 24th at 5 p.m. Terrence. The 24th, we'll be having a conference call at 5 p.m. You have the indicator and the strategy in your hands by then, and we'll have a conference call at that point. <clears throat> 